Hi everyone, so this is a review of how to use the Venn diagram method to analyze a deductive argument. <clears throat> so the idea is that when we have an argument presented to us and uh, we believe it to be a deductive argument, you know, people can say things differently. Uh, people can make a claim and present it to us or phrase it in a way that might be a little confusing or hard to understand. So what we want to do is we want to rephrase these arguments <clears throat> into a more standardized form. And by putting it into a more standardized form, we have some tools that we could use to analyze the arguments to see if they are valid deductive arguments. Okay, so uh, in our last lecture, we got together in um, groups and looked at the following arguments and tried to use the Venn diagram method to analyze the validity of the argument. So let's go ahead and refresh ourselves on the method and how this works. So what we want to do is we want to first um, make the argument into a format referred to as a categorical syllogism. So in order to do that, we first need to make sure we understand how the argument works. Uh, we need to figure out what the conclusion is, what's the main point that the speaker is trying to get across, and what are the claims that they are using to support that main point. In other words, what are the premises and what is the conclusion that the premises are supposed to lead us to believe. One thing to watch out for is when people talk in a normal everyday sort of dialogue, there may be some premises that they are not explicitly saying. These are reasons to believe something that are maybe so obvious to the speaker that they neglect to, to state it <clears throat> or just things that they forget to mention. So keep a lookout for unstated premises. And then part of this standard format is to place the claims in order of premise, premise, conclusion. And then lastly, make sure to turn all of the claims into standard form categorical claims. Um, remember how we did that in our last lecture, right? We had four standard form categorical claims, A claims, E claims, I claims, and O claims, okay? So keep that handy. Maybe they keep that list of those claims handy and what the format is so that you know how to translate people sentences um, into those standard form claims. Okay, so as an example, a categorical syllogism would look something like this, where we state the premise, right, number premise one first. In this case, some lizards are reptiles. Notice that it's in the standard form categorical claim. Uh, yeah, some lizards, right, we have our first term lizards are, and then reptiles is our second term, our category. Okay. Second premise, all reptiles are beautiful beasts. Again, notice that it's a standard form claim, right, it's an A claim here. And we have the two categories, we have the reptiles, R, beautiful beasts being our second category. And then our conclusion, some beautiful beasts are lizards. So this is our categorical syllogism form, right? Premise, premise, conclusion, and each of the claims have been restated to be one of our standard form categorical claims. If this doesn't sound familiar, or if you need a refresher, go back to your notes in the previous lecture to remember what the standard form categorical claims are, okay? Now, to use the Venn diagram method, uh, what we do is obviously we turn those arguments that we'll be looking at into this categorical syllogism standard form. And then you're gonna draw three interlocking circles, right? Each circle representing the three categories, the three terms which we'll have in our syllogism. So if we take a look back to our example syllogism here, we had three terms, right? We had the category of lizards, that's one term. Category of reptiles, that's a second term. And then we had a category of beautiful beasts, that's our third term. So those are the three terms which we refer to within the syllogism. So all categorical syllogisms will have three terms. Okay, so going back, we'll have three interlocking circles that represent all three of those terms. And we're gonna shade an X according to the premises. 
We did that in class in our last lecture, and we'll do one more example before we um, discuss those three practice examples. So we'll go over one example from class uh, briefly in a second. We're always going to shade first and then place X's in non-shaded regions last. So you look at your premises and then you do the shading first. And if you have any sort of sum claim, you put the X into non-shaded regions after you do the shading. If both of the areas where X could go are non-shaded, so when we take a look at our interlocking circles, there's a possibility that it's not obvious where the X could go because there are maybe um, two regions that are non-shaded which the X could be placed in. So if that's the case, we're gonna put the X on the line in between the two. Okay. So again, if this isn't obvious, if you need a refresher, Keep that in mind when we start looking at our examples and how to place the X. And then once we have these three interlocking circles shaded or X, then we can take a look at the conclusion presented to us and see if the conclusion fits, if it necessarily has to be true, given the diagram that we drew. Okay, so it's probably easier just to jump, jump right into the, um, the example. So in class, we looked at this example. Every cowboy is an American, but I know a few Americans who live overseas, so it's pretty obvious that there are cowboys who don't live here. Okay, so again, people can say things any way they want. They can phrase things any way they want. There's lots of ways of saying a sentence that has the same meaning. So it might be easier in order to understand the argument if we first try to restate what they're saying into a syllogism. And here is our categorical syllogism. Um, every cowboy is an American seems to be a premise that the speaker is presenting. Then they present this other premise. I know a few Americans who live overseas. And the conclusion that they give us, that they want us to believe, is that, hey, so it's pretty obvious that there are cowboys who don't live here. Okay, so here is their conclusion. Now, let's rephrase each of those claims into our standard form. So every cowboy is an American. Okay, well that looks like an all sort of claim, an A claim. All cowboys are Americans. And notice here are the terms, the categories, right? We have a category of cowboys, category of, of Americans. So to fit our standard form claim, we rephrase that every cowboy is an American to all cowboys are Americans. I know a few Americans who live overseas. Well, that sounds like they're saying some, right? So some Americans are people who live overseas. Notice that we now have our three terms. We have cowboys, Americans, and people who live overseas. So those are our three categories um, uh, that we're referring to in our syllogism. Take a look at our conclusion. So it's pretty obvious that there are cowboys who don't live here. Well, that sounds like another some claim, right? Some cowboys are people who live overseas. So we kind of translated their phrasing, you know, cowboys. Um, so it's pretty obvious there are cowboys who don't live here. We rephrase that to the category people who live overseas, right? Because that's what we established earlier. So they mean the same thing. We just want to make sure we turn everything into a standardized form so it's easier for us to understand, easier for us to see. Okay, so following our Venn diagram method, we converted the person's, the speaker's argument into um, a categorical syllogism. And now what I recommend is you simplify it even more, right? Reduce all the words into just the very basic um, standard form categorical claims. So we're going to convert all cowboys are Americans to all CRA. We're going to convert all some Americans are people who live overseas to some ARO. And the last thing, last claim, which is our conclusion, some cowboys are people who live overseas. Okay, let's go ahead and convert that to some C's cowboys are O's people who live overseas. Now you can choose whatever variables you like. You can choose uh, to have two variables, you can choose to have, um, in other words, two letters representing a term. You can choose just abbreviations if you like. Just try to rewrite the syllogism in a way that's simplified so that you don't get bogged 
down into language and terms and you know we see lots of words and we try to understand it we sometimes get freaked out we can sometimes get stressed and it might be useful to reduce what we have to look at to simplify it so that we're less stressed and we can think about this more analytically now let's take a look at the venn diagram method so we need to have our three interlocking circles so here are our three interlocking circles, each circle representing a category or a term, right? So here's our C category, which is our cowboys. Here's our A category, which is our Americans. And here's our O category, which is people who live overseas. Okay, let's see how they interlock here. So I numbered each of these areas to make it easy for us to discuss how to do the shading. So how to do the shading? Let's take a look at our first claim. All CRA, all cowboys are Americans. So here's our cowboys, here's our Americans. And when it says all cowboys are Americans, that means these two sections, one and four, don't exist, right? There are no cowboys that are not American. So one and four are going to be shaded out because they don't exist. There are no cowboys who are not Americans because all cowboys are Americans. That's what this overlapping two and five mean, all right? Okay, so some A-R-O. So we have a sum claim here, which means we have to put an X someplace. So sum A, here is our A section. Our O, here's our O section. Where, where the idea with an X is we place it where there's at least one member. So sum A-R-O means that there are some, there's at least one A who's also an O. Well, that could go in five or it can go into section six, right? Now, since it's not obvious which one should go to, because we have two choices, we're going to put the X right on that line, right in the middle. Okay? That means that it's maybe, right? It's a maybe five or six. Okay, so let's take a look at our conclusion. Some cowboys are people who live overseas. If we take a look at what that would look like if drawn, here's our C, cowboys. Here's our O, people who live overseas. Now, if we were to draw this claim, some cowboys, people who live overseas, this X should be in section five, right? It should be right here. But notice X is not in section five it's right at the border between five and six so it's not too clear which means this conclusion is not valid because if it were valid there'd be an x right in section five right not on this border which means it could be in five or could be in six so we say not valid okay so this is a review from our last lecture just to get us warmed up on how to use the venn diagram method now here are the examples we left off with in class and that we tried to do in groups the other day. All, caffeinated, uh, all forms of coffee are stimulants. It's obvious since all caffeinated drinks are stimulants and all coffees have caffeine. Well, I think the difficulty some of us had with this one in class was that we did not first try to understand what the conclusion of the argument was. We didn't first try to get a sense for how the argument works. So let's read it one more time together. All forms of coffee are stimulants. It's obvious since all caffeinated drinks are stimulants and all coffees are ca uh, have caffeine. Well, what's the main point that they're trying to make us believe? Notice the language. All forms of coffee are stimulants. It's obvious since. Well, it seems then that the next sentence here, sentence number two, it give us the reasons to believe sentence number one, right? It's obvious, meaning sentence number one is obvious. That first claim, it's obvious since, and they go on to tell us why it should be obvious. So the conclusion is all forms of coffee are stimulants. And then the next sentence provides the reasons to believe it, the premises. Okay, so let's go ahead and outline this first. All caffeinated drinks are stimulants is our first premise, right? Since all caffeinated drinks are stimulants. And then the second premise, all forms of coffee are caffeinated drinks. So that's just a rephrasing of this last claim here. All coffees have caffeine. 
We rephrase it this way because we want to create categories, remember? So all forms of coffee, that's a category, are caffeinated drinks category. Category of things. And then inclusion is their first claim. All forms of coffee are stimulants. Okay, so we rephrase now the argument into, into a syllogism, and we rephrased it into a categorical syllogism. Notice that all the claims are fit into our standard form claims, categorical claims. Okay, so like I mentioned before, let's just simplify it down even further, have less things to look at. So I'm going to simplify it to these, uh, these letters. And again, you can simplify it any way you like. But here we go. All caffeinated drinks are stimulants. All forms of coffee are caffeinated drinks. All forms of coffee are stimulants. Okay. Now that we've identified the argument and how it works, we can draw the Venn diagram. So all caffeinated drinks are stimulants. So here's our caffeinated drink circle. Here's our stimulant circle. So if all caffeinated drinks are stimulants, then this section exists, but everything that's a caffeinated drink outside of being a stimulant does not exist. So that was shaded out. And then the second premise, all forms of coffee are caffeinated drinks. Where here is our coffee circle. Here is our caffeinated drink circle. So since all C's are CD, this section has to remain and then everything else has to be shaded away. Everything that's outside of caffeinated drinks within the coffee circle is gone. Right? So that's how we're left with this uh, diagram. Now, let's take a look at our conclusion. All forms of coffee are stimulants. Well, if all forms of coffee are stimulants, let's take a look to see if, that's what, if that fits with our diagram. We'll take a look. Take a look at coffee. The only types of coffee that are left are stimulants, right? There's no coffee that's outside of the stimulant circle. The only coffee left is within the stimulant circle. So this seems to be a valid argument. Okay. Now, the examples for, um, uh, I should say, the slides that review the second and third examples that I had you do in groups will be posted. So review those. Um, make sure to email me or, or get a hold of me if you have any questions about them, and good luck on the homework assignment.